And that is the close of our formal presentation. As mentioned before, if you have questions, you can submit them via the Q&A. I have the department, the program chair, Dr. Rachel Sangri join us. Rachel, do you have anything to add before we open it up for questions and answers? No, I think that was a, a really um, complete presentation and um, uh, so glad to see a few of you here and looking forward to answering any questions that you have. All right, great, thank you, Rachel. Um, I don't see any questions right now. Again, feel free to take this opportunity to submit some. I did receive some questions via email in advance and I will go to those while you all prepare your questions um, to submit on the Q&A function. And the first question is, are all courses offered at every semester? Can I begin the program in the summer? Um, so taking them out of order, you may begin the program in the summer, you may begin um, any term that you like, as long as your application is processed in time to register for the courses in that term. Um, this, the, all of the courses are not offered every semester. Um, so we have a schedule um, online that we do on the EP website that we do stick to. Um, so they're probably about six or seven courses that are offered in the fall and the spring semesters, and then uh, two to three that are offered in the summer, um, just because we have less demand in the summer for courses. So um, uh, we'd be happy to provide that link for you um, if you're interested in, in seeing that schedule. Great, thank you for that. The next yeah. question from Victor, what are the requirements of the professional certificate? Um, so the professional certificate requires uh, uh, the completion of five courses within three years. Um, and aside from that, it, it requires you to, um, the student to meet with um, me at the beginning of the, um, of the program and just to develop a cohesive set of courses that will meet your needs. Uh, but there aren't specific course requirements for the, for the certificate. All right, great, thank you for that. The next question, could you please tell us more about on-site studying in the university and is it included, is it included fund for students? I'm not sure about the second part, but you can talk a little bit more about on-site options. Yeah, so most of our courses are offered online or in a format that's called virtual live. Um, and that virtual live format, the difference between those two online means that it's online asynchronous. Um, so you're not meeting necessarily at the same time for, um, you know, with your classmates and with your uh, instructor. Um, typically, the, an online course will consist of uh, pre-recorded lectures um, and, and an opportunity for a synchronous meeting through weekly office hours, but they're not required. Um, whereas virtual live is a course that is offered on campus um, at a particular time each week. Um, and you're welcome to either attend in person on campus or to uh, sort of attend remotely. So by, um, you know, the, the course is offered, uh, the, the instructor is also being recorded on Zoom during the course and, um, and the technology exists in the classroom so, so that you sort of feel part of the classroom, you can see your classmates and interact with them. So um, that's, that's one way uh, that you can, uh, you know, take courses on site. Um, as an EP student, you're also welcome to take um, other courses um, on Homewood campus that are that are offered as part of the full time program, um, and that uh, those courses are included. Um, the, the tuition is the same for those courses as it is for the the courses that are listed just with EP. Um, the the catch or the the the, the the challenge that some EP students face with those courses is that because they're designed for full-time students, they're offered during the day. So they're not necessarily after 4.30 in the evening, um, say, or five o'clock in the evening when you might be out of work. Uh, so you'd have to be able to attend the class in person, maybe two times a week, mid-morning. Um, so not necessarily convenient for working professionals, but you're welcome to. Great, thank you for that, Rachel. The next question from Mark, how are classes set up in terms of course length? Are they set up to allow completion of course material over a weekend, Friday through Sunday? 
Yeah, good question. So um, courses are, you, you should be able to, to complete the work over the course of a, a weekend, a Friday through a Sunday. So, so a general guideline is a, a three credit, that's a full credit course, um, which is all we offer through the um, EP program, um, has about eight to 10 hours of work associated with it each week. Um, so if, as long as, you know, your weekend is free, yes, you can, you can complete it then. And a lot of students do. All right. The next question from Victor, can all courses of the professional certificate be applied to the master's program after completion of the certificate? Yes, absolutely. Um, and, and that's where that, that initial meeting, um, with your advisor is important, uh, because the master's certificate or the graduate certificate, sorry, because the graduate certificate does not have required courses per se, um, most of the courses that you take as part of that certificate might end up being elective courses in your master's. So if you moved from a graduate certificate program to a master's program, uh, there's a good chance you'll have to then take the core courses for the master's program. Um, but yes, the, the, the other courses um, should transfer. And um, if there's any risk of them not transferring, then your advisor would let you know that when you're, when you're planning them. All right. Um, Rachel, can you talk to the prospects a little bit more about the independent study option and how that works and how that's set up? Yeah. Um, so for the independent study, um, you register for it. Uh, similarly to how you register for other courses. Um, most students don't do that until their ninth or 10th course in the program after they've had a chance to uh, meet some instructors who are working in their field of interest doing research um, or you know, professional activities in, in the student's field of inter interest um, until you've sort of built up a, a relationship with a faculty member. And then once you have, um, it's sort of up to you to, uh, up to the student to approach the faculty member and say, you know, I'd really like to do an independent study with you. Uh, can we brainstorm a little bit on what a topic might be? Would you be willing to work with me? Um, and, you know, we have great instructors in the program and they often um, do advise students through these independent studies. So uh, at that point, once you have a project in mind, you fill out a form and submit it to me and get the approval and, and then go ahead and, and register for it. All right, great. Thank you for that. The next question from Victor. I'm from Costa Rica. Could I take a completely virtual online semester and another on campus? So um, most CP students don't do um, a semester on campus. Um, you know, you can take, uh, maybe, I need, maybe I need you to clarify the question a little bit, but um, typically you would take a course or two because this, because this program is designed for um, professional engineers or, or students working towards um, professional engineering licensure. Um, they're working full time. And so typically only taking one course a semester, maybe two. Um, so, so, so definitely you can, you can take all of your courses from Costa Rica. You can take um, a, a fully, you know, design a fully remote program. Um, and if you wanted to come to campus to take a couple of courses, that's, um, that's fine. It's just, um, maybe we'd need to speak, that's, that's a, it's a, that's an unusual uh, request. So maybe we right. need to speak a little bit. Right. Um, so, so international students do have a separate set, also have a separate set of admissions um, protocols as well. So I'll put a link to that information in the chat so that you can reference that. Um, and because, as Dr. Sangri mentioned, the, the program is set up for online and part-time studies. And so, of course, when you're coming to the States with a J-1 visa, it's a different set of things that have to be in place for you to be here studying. And so we would put you in contact with our international student, our internet our office of international studies for them to let you know what would need to happen for that to take place. Um, because it's not as simple. The transition from online um, to in-person is not simple for an international student. And so I don't wanna give you any misinformation. If that's something you're seriously considering, we definitely would want you to talk to 
um, the people on the ground that have all the answers to any questions that you could have. But right now I'm going to put in the chat a link to uh, the international students admissions requirements. I don't know if you've already applied, but starting there, there's just a different set of um, rules and, and things that, that you need to follow in the admissions process. And if you need further information past that point about studying on campus, then I can certainly put you in contact with the people over at OIS. Hope that answers your question, Mark, or I'm not sure who had that question. I hope that answers your question. Do we have any other questions in the chat or um, you can put them in the Q&A as well. While you have us here, I'm just cutting and pasting the link to international admissions. Now would be the time. Typically what happens after I begin to close it out is when people remember questions. So I will close it out slow if there are no additional questions right now. I'm gonna talk a little bit about tuition fees because that's a typical question that we get. Um, and so the cost for all 10 courses, we, we tell students to budget between 48,000 and 50,000 and with the price of books included. And so uh, the courses cost $5,872 less the Dean's Fellowship. Um, and so per course, per graduate course at the 600 level was $4,755. There are no additional fees outside of your graduation fee, which is $100. Um, and of course, there's no application fee. And you can submit your application at any time because we have rolling admissions. And so I hope that answers some of the questions that you have not asked. We do have another question from Victor in the Q&A. The university currently accepts the Duolingo test for non-native speakers of English. Will it continue to be that way or is it just because of the COVID-19 situation? I am not sure about that, Victor. I will provide you with my email address. Um, I think that the information is probably on the website but I won't have you looking for it. Um, but you can shoot me an email and I'll get you a definitive answer to that question. I know a lot of things did change because of COVID-19, um, but but I'm not sure about that. Do you know, Rachel? Okay, yeah, so Victor- No, just, sorry. That's okay. Just shoot me an e email. I'm putting my email address in the Q&A um, and I'll get an answer to that question. Do we have any more questions from our prospective students this afternoon? Okay, well, I'm gonna put an email address in the chat. If you have any questions that you think of following this presentation, feel free to email jhep at jhu.edu for general admissions questions. If you have more um, questions that are program specific, we will forward them um, to Rachel or someone else that, that's familiar with the program specifically. Um, and Rachel, did you have anything you wanted to add before we close out the session this afternoon? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, again, nice to see you here and, and thanks for your questions. Oh, the video. Yes, sorry. So someone's asking about the video. This video won't be uploaded, but there will be um, a production of the information that was provided in the PowerPoint and that will be up at the end of next week, but you will get an email when it's up on the YouTube channel and when it's up on the website. So you can surely um, access it and uh, review as needed. All right, yes, thank you so much. Thank you, Rachel, for taking the time to be here and answer the questions this afternoon. We look forward to seeing you all in our virtual class classrooms and we hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, Diana. Thanks.